Hello everyone, I'm just working on the background of the Roxy's Journal of Stitchery piece down the garden path. Um, I've, I've done some stitching on the background as you can see there in various places and there but I haven't gone all the way along yet. Uh, I've just invisible stitched these pieces here down that's kind of depicting a step and a um, what would you call that like a, <laughs> a pole perhaps to a veranda that sort of thing um, and I just wanted to show you how I did the path I didn't want it too dark I just want it there as a guide and I've used some lace and this is the lovely lace. I got this from the Collectorama. It's um, a nice vintage lace and I thought I would use that because it's not too dark and not too light. And all I've done is... So this is on the back of my sketch. I've just sketched a piece that I think will work. And this is the next piece I want to do here. And I'm just thinking it will go something like, perhaps like that. That looks about right. And all I did was place my lace over my rough sketch there as best I could. And I got myself some nice uh, sharp scissors. And... I started cutting okay so about there remember my piece is actually much wider than this piece of paper so I'm just and it doesn't have to be perfect it's just to give me something to work with Kind of made an end to the path so I'm just going to I can always add more to it if I want to if I find I haven't done it very well I can patch it together I've done that to the other piece like that um, so let's have a look that like something like that so we're just going to take that off I don't want any straight lines across there and then just cut it off down the bottom like that and that is a guide for me and I can put that anywhere I want on here so as I said the garden path comes up into the distance comes back up into the up close and then into the distance again um, like that so let's have a look how we might want it maybe there we'll put it there so maybe we'll just straighten that a little did that even straighten it <laughs> See if it's that looks all right like that. I think. Nope, I'll just so I will pin that into place. And the edges and things will be covered with the flowers and greenery and things like that as I go along, I'm thinking. Uh, kind of might like that more like that. Let's have a look. Oh no, that's fine. Okay, I'll leave it like that. So I'll pin it on. 
and then once again invisible stitch it on um, I will show you how I invisible stitch somebody did ask me in my last video um, and it you know we just presume everybody knows these things but that's not the case not everybody knows these things especially if they're just starting out just, there we go now. I do is I get that's for another thing get some thread a bigger piece than that on a fine needle too fine. <laughs> oh, I can't say it. There we go, I've got it. Put a knot in the end of it. There we go. And you just come up from behind like that. And oh, it might be just a little bit hard to see on the lace, but then that's where I've come up there. And you just take ever such a small stitch and you take it back down like that so it holds it in place. But on the back, you take a large stitch. So we've done it here, and I'm going to come down and put one all the way down here. So this is where our first stitch was. Now I'm coming all the way down here. And taking another little tiny stitch and coming in, coming up further down here. So I'll take the pin out. That's where we just took the stitch. Big stitch at the back and coming up at the front again here taking another little stitch and coming out further down and that will hold my piece of lace in place without having stitches all over the place I could take them out at the end if I want to but if you do them small enough you don't have to all the way down here again and you don't have to have them so far apart like if you want to catch something you can have a closer one and think oh well I want to make sure that's caught and then take another big one so they can be as close together or as far apart as you want Here. Oops. Get tangled up. There we go. And now I can catch that there and bring it up over here. So that's what invisible stitching is. And that enables you to take the pins out and work on your fabric without the without anything moving around. And the closer the thread is to the colour of the fabric you're working on, you know, the more invisible it is, really. So I hope that helps. So I'm just going to go ahead and stitch this piece on now. Okay, now to get started on a few wild flowers. Um, I don't have huge amounts of embroidery threads and things like that. I'm looking for greens. There's a couple of greens here 
I think there's another one back there as well by the look of it. So there's some in there. I have these grains here. I have I have this. This is from an I got this at the op shop, but it's it's from one of those kits. And I got this when I was doing the first journal of stitchery and it has lots of different greens in it but that's quite thick so that has to be for things up closer I'm thinking or a thick tree or something like that but I've got that I really need to put it in a new bag as well and I've also got this that I find found at the op shop some time ago and it's a little kit and it's got a few threads but it's got some shades of green in there not a lot though um, but I do love the colours of it. See, I would never do that. I wouldn't do that. Um, but I do like the threads. So I'll leave the threads out. And I do like the tin as well. Put that over there. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've got any more around here. I've got a few... Um, Here we go, here we go, here we go. I've got another one of these things. Um, and there's some green in there. I think that was left over from a kit I was sent. By the look of it. Oh, no, 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 look. This one, I'm pretty sure that came in my mystery box and I've popped it in here. So that's great, isn't it? And look, we've got... The, obviously from two different kits. There's a bit of grain that's a bit too limey, but I do like that little dark brown grain. Mm, and there's those ones there as well. Okay, so we've got a good selection of, and I need to use these things. Look, there's a cream one there as well. Um, I need to use these things instead of, you know, going out and buying new ones that are always lovely. Uh, but I've got to use what I've got. I've also got... Um, oh, look at this. See, these are silk ribbons. There's some greens there that I can use. That one's a bit too bright, that one. But they are, they are fine, those ones. They're nice. So I'll pop those there. Yeah, that other one's just a little bit too bright. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Uh, oh, there's a nice pale one. Oh, there's one. Look at that. Oh, I remember finding these at the op shop years ago um, there's a pale one but it's that one's quite pale too isn't it I could take it out you never know it's green okay so there's all my green because I need some foliage and some stalks and stems and things like that so perhaps once I get started, I think things will flow a little better. It's always difficult to get started, I think. It's the hardest part for me. So what am I going to do? <laughs> There's my plan. <laughs> Not that I'm sticking strictly to my plan, but it gives me some sort of focus on what I had in mind and that can change at any given time it's just you know something for me to think well I could do this but I won't or oh yeah that's what I wanted to do okay so okay so we can start with putting some stems going to the side of the path and um, wildflowers we're doing wildflowers 
And wildflowers can be different in every country, can't they? Because what is a, um, a cultivated flower in one country could be a wildflower in another, or even a weed in another country. So I guess it leaves us wide open to whatever we want to do. <laughs> okay, I'll start, I'll start here. That would be easier. These ones up here need to be a bit bigger. These ones need to be medium and very small down here. And I will start with some greenery. So just some green stitches I think will get me started. So we'll go for this one. This is a mid-range. Oh, what is that? It's even got... These are Itchy Stitchy. Stranded Cotton. These are... Right. GR20. That's a nice colour. And these were samples in our mystery box. I'm quite sure they were. Yes. Okay. Don't want to unravel it too much. I need to spend a bit of time and sort my threads out. I might just put that back in there so I don't forget what it is. I don't think I'll get that back in there to be honest. Ugh. No, I don't. Okay, I need to put it on. Um, so, I might take three strands. For this find myself a needle. Uh, what's that? Oops, that one's it's got a knot in it. Oh, I almost threw a needle away then. Goodness. I feel like that's not the right needle to be honest. Is it, is it going to be? Okay, you know, I'm going to go with this one that I was using for this because it felt really comfortable. I'm not going for a pristine. Oh, come on! Let me thread in. I'm not going for a pristine-looking embroidery piece. I'm going for fun and pretty, casual, and just enjoying the whole making of the piece. stitch is the hardest I guess so let's just get some stitches put in and I'm overlapping it over the path a bit and I'm just going to do some like grassy like stitches to start with and see where that takes us Gotta keep it straight so I know where I am. It doesn't have to be perfect in any way. Okay, so I've started. There we go, started. <laughs> right. Actually, what I might do is do a few of those all the way along the path, the edge of the path.
always making sure it's you know you've got plenty of room if you feel that it's pulling a bit just go back and loosen a few of the stitches because you don't want it pulling and these some of these stitches they may get um, stitched over by other flowers and things like that I've left, see these are only invisible stitched on, I've left them open so that when I put a stitch in I can tuck it behind the step like that. make some of them crooked because you know grasses and things like that do not grow straight or all straight up do they they're in all different kinds of angles and things like that so keep that in mind okay let me just couple more and that's got us at least we're started aren't we well I am I just pulled that so that's fine Okay, so that's where I'm starting. And what I'm going to do now is do this sort of thing in various places around my path. Um, you know, and work on different areas of it with the same thing to keep some sort of continuity going throughout my piece. And that way if I only have a small amount of thread I can use it throughout rather than just in one little area if if that's what I want so there's there it is there okay so I'm just going to go I'll turn the camera off and do exactly the same sort of thing in different areas all right so this is what I've done so far it's the beginning there goes up I've done, I've used like two or three different colour threads, two, like all of it was done in this colour and then towards the back I've done a darker colour and then towards the front I've done a couple of lighter colours um, just to give that, just to make it look interesting so it's not all one colour. And then I've started, oh, and that's that side there as well. I have not done this side of the path because I'm not quite sure how to do that just yet, the inside of the path. Um, I have started doing some wild flowers. I haven't put the flower heads on them yet, but I've, I've done a split stitch, as you can see, going up there and up there and there, and then just a bit of a, I don't know what that stitch is called, just like three stitches in a row or something. One there, one there, a couple there, little ones. 
and some over here as well. I only had a little bit of that um, embroidery thread. It was out of this. So I could only do so much. So I thought I'd do two clusters there because normally things appear in clusters, don't they? Um, and then I've got to go and put the little flower heads on them. Um, and whatever colour I do those in, I'll, I'll scatter a couple back here as well. But they don't have to be as detailed because they're in the distance. <laughs> I made it easy on myself. It's only the ones at the front that have to be more specific. But the ones up the back, they can just be a blur, um, which I'm quite happy doing that. Um, I was thinking further down the track I may add a little bit of paint to blur it a little bit as well I haven't done that before so that's something I will it's trial, going to be trial and error I'll have to get a scrap of fabric and try it on that first but just so you know it looks like there's ground as well and I do intend for the path to be more like a rock uh, you know like a stone path the lace is just my base so it's a guide for me and it sets it apart from the rest of the fabric I don't intend to do a sky it's not meant to look realistic it's just fun um, so I don't intend to do a sky or anything like that it's just a little bit of um, garden path <laughs> floating in the air so that's what I've done in this video. I will go ahead and do some more um, stalks for flowers. Um, yeah, I think this video is probably long enough. I don't want it to go too long. And there may be another, because that's only one type of flower and there's so many wildflowers. I'll have to do a few more before I think they give us another prompt next week, don't they? Ooh. Okay, so yes, I'll come back on with another video with a couple more types of wildflowers as well. So thank you for joining me so far and take care everybody. Bye.